My name is Tracy Morell. I am a multimedia artist, mostly working primarily with silhouettes and other materials. And if you can look around my studio, that's a consistent theme that you see. Silhouettes of black women in blue, my favorite color. I like to mix them with different materials, either materials that I have collected. I start designing my own paper, so a lot of the work is now the silhouettes are out of the paper I design, out of wax and rice paper. And I finished the majority of my work in resin, so it has a wonderful sheen, and you can see yourself in it. I have artists in my family, so I was introduced to art at a very young age. My great uh, aunt and my great uncle were very well known um, in New York, and so we were just surrounded by art. And so it was a part of life. There was, there was nothing separating it from anything else. And then as I got older and I had to explain to people that I was an artist, I found out that it was not part of everybody's life. And art is, to me, it's the creation of something that is inside that reflects what I've seen. So for instance, when I look at my silhouettes, that is the image of what, how I see black women. I see them in a graceful pose. I see them in a pose of, in some cases, carrying a burden, but they're strong and they're doing it. Um, this one right here, you're just seeing those lovely froze with flowers in it. But I'm taking what I see and I'm making it, I'm bringing it forth and I'm putting it in a form where others can experience it. So my dream job was the music industry, and I was in it, working for a record label and just having a great time. And the longer I worked in it, I realized we had two value systems, and I either was going to change my value system or I was going to get out. So I got out of the music industry. So while I was trying to figure out what to do in the meantime, I decided I wanted a painting of a sunrise over my staircase, and for some reason I just knew that I could do it. It was in my head. Went to art store, bought the biggest canvas, all kind of supplies, set up an easel in my kitchen. Oh my God, it was so horrible. And every time I'd finish and go like, no, that's not it, I'd light it out. And I had a friend who was an artist come over and I asked him to help me. He came in, I was like, great, that's a sunset. I wanted a sunrise. He said, Tracy, have you thought about taking an art class? No, well, that's a great idea. I'll take an art class, thank you. And I started taking art classes. And it started all the anxiety about what am I gonna do with my life. Whenever I was creating something, I didn't it was gone. I didn't have that that that, that panic feeling. And so I kept painting and giving them away as gifts. And I had my first exhibition and people bought them. And I was like, oh wait a minute, I think this is my new career. And that's how I started in 2020 when George Floyd was killed murdered and I saw all my friends responding to that and I didn't know how to respond to it and I was like I didn't know what to do and I was talking to a friend of mine and I was telling her I said do I need I, I want to respond to this but I don't that's not what my work's about and I never forget she said Tracy what you're doing is just as important as those who are out there painting the murals and you know illustrating what we go through. When someone looks at your paintings, they feel peace. And we need that. Just as much as we need a painting or the art forms out there that get us ready to fight or you know, spearhead something. She said, so keep doing what you're doing because it is needed just as much as what other artists are doing. So I continue to focus on what I'm doing and realizing that it does have value. The first one is that um, starving artists, that, that needs to be removed completely from, you know, our, our language. No artist is going to be able to create when they don't have their basic necessities. The other thing is that what we create of people's color is not a sub-creation of what's out there. It needs and it should be honored and recognized for the hard work. All this work is intentional. You know, it's not something that we got into a corner and did. 
I mean, we think through it. We spend more time trying to figure out what to go on the canvas or what to go in this, you know, whatever we're working on, just like every other artist. Those who are making the most money are um, white men, and that needs to change. And, you know, black artists like being discovered now and being collected, and the work is being traded but it's been, a lot of it's been done after they have passed on, so they're, they're not able to reap the benefits of their work. All of that needs to be adjusted. And then women of color, come on, they're doing some badass stuff. We need to be paid the same as white male artists. I'm ready. The most beneficial thing to me was having a mentor. And um, I had two, who, one was um, Louis Del Sartre, and that's my first mural I worked on. And that was the first time I was in a space where there were other artists. I mean, artists were flying in to work on that project. And we were just having a great time. First time I was in a studio and everybody was bringing in bottles of wine. I was like, yeah. So mentors and the mentors I've had after um, Lewis have all given me something. Other thing I think that's really important is that um, surrounding yourself with other artists so that you basically create your tribe that you can have feedback in. There are days that um, I just can't get started and I just have a conversation with another artist and they're telling me about what they're working on or what their challenges are. And next thing I know, I know I'm ready, you know? So. You know, build your tribe, always keep exploring. I now want to move into public art. I know nothing about public art, but with this residency that I have now, I have a time and a space to read and um, get to meet public art artists and find out how to do it and how to do it well. Historically, I want to say that I feel that, you know, when I learn what artists have been doing, and their conditions were way more severe than, than what we have as contemporary artists, I'm just, it motivates me. It, it motivates me when I read about all the artists that were in the Harlem Renaissance, because that's when the artists in my family were flourishing, and they were getting funds to the um, WPA project. That contemporary artists excite me because, you know, the world is art. I mean, we, we, we choose what we want and we find our market, our market finds us. And I see more and more artists able to support themselves full time. And that right there is just the best. Sometimes I forget that and wonder how come um, I'm not able to, you know, I have insomnia and stuff like that. And then I really recognize that self-care allows me to be the best artist that I possibly can be. So I need to be working out. I need to watch what I eat. I need to spend time not, you know, working on deadlines. I need to have a balanced life as much as possible and engage as much as possible, not be so isolated in my studio. And those are all the things that help me grow and also will give me the long-term lifespan <laughs> to continue to create work. So uh, my project manager received an email stating that uh, they were interested. A German publishing company was reissuing Toni Morris's catalog and they wanted one of my pieces to be on the first cover. We were like going, yes! And they chose a piece that I did for the AKAs that's at Georgia Tech. And um, then they came back and they says, well, we want three more. And this year they've released they're releasing all four covers. And it's just so cool just to see your work with Toni Morrison at the top. And it, my babies are on the cover. It's, I was talking to, um, I was talking to Bahamu Peku in, in the, this, this morning. And I was like, I don't know how they found me. He says, I know how they found you. I said, really? Through your hard work, Tracy. It's not like you, you've not been doing anything. You have been working and people are noticing. I was like, yeah, I haven't worked yet. You're right. He said, so keep it up. I get my, I have a small team that I work with. My best friend, 
is my project manager. So she reads, she goes through all the emails that come through and she will do all of the due diligence to make sure whether it's a project I should take or not. And then we get together and we do, and make sure that I've not overbooked myself. But I have a real small team that I work with. I don't feel like I'm ready to be for management company. There are things that for the next two years, I know what I want, where I want to go. And I don't want to have, I don't want to turn that over to somebody else. I just want my internal team to work with me. I have studio art, female artists, there's studio assistants. So when I get a big project, I bring them in and we get, they help me. Oh my God, last year they helped me do two solo exhibitions. We got all of that done, but um, internal is, um, building my internal team is where I want to stay for now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's the only way they're going to be able to continue to grow. And with the right management, their, their work will be in front of the ideas, will be with the right management, their work will be put in front of those who are looking for projects that their internal circle may not know about. So it's something that, like, I look at artists who, like when get I mean, she has an amazing team on what she's doing and the scope and scale of what she, she does. And I was like, how does she do that? Because she has, she has a gallery, she has a management team, she has all of that. Um, but she's operating on that level, you know? So at some point, you know, it's something that we're gonna have to look at. But then we'll be able to benefit from it.